New genetic studies show that Germans come from an amazing mix of at least four separate ancient groups. Each one arrived at different moments and carried their own unique genetic markers. The tail locked in German DNA covers 45,000 years of human endurance, progress, and domination across one of Europe's most fought-over regions. When the last ice age was at its worst, huge glaciers covered northern Europe. Small groups of humans struggled to stay alive in the brutal lands south of the frozen sheets. These western hunter-gatherers built incredible abilities for living in a frozen environment. They developed genetic changes that let them absorb vitamin D well, despite long months of darkness, and keep their bodies warm in freezing conditions. Dig sites like Hollefels in southwestern Germany show these people made the world's first known musical tools and realistic art. This includes the famous Venus of Holes, carved from mammoth ivory 40,000 years back. They weren't basic survivors, but advanced humans with rich cultures. Still, their numbers stayed low because of the tough climate. Fresh DNA testing from hunter-gatherer bones across Europe has shown their unique genetic makeup. Most had Y-chromosome HLA group I, which seems to have formed in Europe during the Ice Age. Their mitochondrial DNA mainly belonged to haplogroups U5 and U2. These bloodlines would last in European groups for tens of thousands of years. When the ice started pulling back around 15,000 years ago, these survivor groups grew fast across the newly livable areas. They brought with them not just their genes, but also their skills including advanced stone tool methods and Arctic survival knowledge that would be vital for life in Northern Europe. Today's Germans keep roughly 15 to 20% of their bloodline from these Paleolithic hunter-gatherers. The highest amounts are in Northern areas. This old heritage adds to features still seen today. This includes the common blue eyes in Germanic groups and certain genetic versions affecting how bodies process food and adapt to cold. About 8,500 years ago, farming villages in Anatolia started one of history's biggest migrations. These early European farmers brought with them tamed wheat, barley, cattle, and sheep. They also carried genetic lines that would completely reshape European groups. Their spread into Europe wasn't a slow sharing of knowledge, but a quick population takeover that hit the Rhine Valley in just a few hundred years. These Anatolian migrants looked very different from the European hunter-gatherers they met. Their Y chromosomes mainly belonged to haplogroup G2A. Their mitochondrial DNA had lineages H, T, J, and K. These were uncommon or missing in European hunter-gatherer groups. The farmer's edge was in numbers rather than fighting ability. Farm-based societies could hold populations 10 to 20 times thicker than hunter-gatherer bands. A farming settlement of 200 people could easily be larger than all the hunter-gatherers within a day's travel. This pressure from population, combined with better tools and maybe new sicknesses, caused the fast replacement of European hunter-gatherer groups. The genetic proof for this takeover is clear. At Betahula in Germany, diggers found hunter-gatherer and farmer bones buried in the same cave but divided by just a few hundred years. DNA testing showed they were as genetically separate as today's Europeans and East Asians, even though they lived within kilometers of one another. The shift wasn't completely peaceful. Some sites reveal signs of fighting, including mass burial sites with clear battle dead. The Talheim Death Pit in Badva holds the bones of 34 people who died violently about 7,000 years ago. This might show conflict between arriving farmers and local hunter-gatherers. Still, genetic proof also shows mixed marriages and slow blending in many places. The pattern hints that hunter-gatherer men sometimes became part of farming villages, while farmer women were more likely to keep their separate genetic background. This uneven mixing made complicated population patterns that changed from place to place. The farmers brought major changes beyond farming itself. They brought in rectangular wooden homes, pottery creation, and smooth stone axes. They also introduced new ideas of property rights and social ranking that would deeply change European societies. Their villages were fixed, often defended, and showed obvious signs of social layers. By 6,000 years ago, farming had taken over across Germany. The genetic base set by these Anatolian migrants would make up 60 to 70% of the bloodline in today's German groups. 
Their genetic mark includes variants that affect how people digest milk products, hair and eye shade, and defense against specific illnesses. The third big piece of German ancestry came around 4,800 years ago from a surprising direction, the grasslands of Eastern Europe. The Yamna culture grew on the Pontic steppes, north of the Black Sea. There, they built a groundbreaking way of life based on cattle herding, horse taming, and bronze metalwork. Recent digs of Yamna burial hills show a warrior culture focused on movement and rank. Male burials often have bronze arms, stone axes, and proof of horse killing. The men were tall, often over six feet, with strong builds that point to lives of hard work. The Yamna were a genetic blend of eastern hunter-gatherers from the Russian forests and Caucasus hunter-gatherers from the mountains between Europe and Asia. This combination made a population with special genetic traits, especially the Y chromosome HLA group R1B M269. This would become the most widespread father's bloodline in Western Europe. Their spread into Europe was quick and broad. Dig evidence shows Yamna-related cultures hitting the Rhine within just a few hundred years of their first Western push. In some parts of Central Europe, they added up to 75% of the local bloodline. This was one of the most dramatic population swaps in European ancient history. What made the Yamna so effective? They had learned skills that gave them clear edges over existing European groups. Horse taming gave them never-before-seen ability to move across huge distances. Bronze arms and tools were better than anything local stone-using cultures had. Wheeled carts let them carry whole families and herds across the land. The Yamna also brought new social setups based on male-led warrior rankings. Their burial habits show sharp gaps in wealth and status. Elite males were buried under large hills with lots of grave items, while others got simple burials. This social layering would shape European societies for thousands of years. Most importantly, the Yamna brought the original Indo-European languages that would grow into Germanic, Celtic, Italic, and other European language families. Language studies suggests these tongues spread with Yamna genetic bloodline, building the base for today's European language, MAP. Around 4,500 years ago, a striking cultural wave spread across Western and Central Europe. It created the first continent-wide network of shared customs. The Bell Beaker culture, named for their unique bell-shaped drinking cups, built connections that reached from Ireland to Poland and from Scotland to Morocco. Fresh genetic testing has shown how complex Bell Beaker growth was. Unlike earlier cultural spreads that followed simple movement patterns, Bell Beaker influence mixed population travel, trade systems, and cultural sharing in ways that changed greatly by area. The outcome was a form of Bronze Age worldwide connection that linked far-off communities through shared skills, art styles, and possibly religious views. Bell Beaker communities were expert craft makers and traders. Their graves hold copper blades from Ireland, amber from the Baltic, gold from Transylvania, and ivory from Africa. This huge trade network needed deep knowledge of land features, sea travel, and dealing with others. Dig proof suggests Bell Beaker communities had standard weights and measures, making trade easier across vast spaces. In Germany, Bell Beaker groups showed strong genetic link with earlier corded wear bands. This shows they were part of the wider steppe ancestry spread. German Bell Beaker men often had Y chromosome lines. R1BP32 and R1BU106. These subgroups stay common in Germanic groups today. These communities built new metalworking methods for handling copper and bronze. They made weapons and tools of never seen before quality. They were skilled archers, as shown by the stone wrist guards found in Belbica burials. Dig sites like the Ulo graves in Saxony Anhalt give close looks into Belbica family life. Multiple graves hold nuclear families buried as one, including children who died young. This suggests strong family ties and possibly outbreak diseases that killed entire households at once. The hundreds of years after the Bell Beaker wave saw the rise of the tumulus, culture across Central Europe. This was a key bridge between the early Bronze Age and later changes that would form Germanic identity. This culture came from the earlier Unity ways but grew into something clearly new, 
a warrior society that would leave its mark across huge areas from the Carpathian Basin to the Ryan Valley. The Tumulus people stood out through their burial ways. They placed their dead beneath massive earth mounds that still mark the European land today. These burial hills weren't basic graves, but rather power monuments. They often held detailed bronze weapons, gold decorations, and proof of sacrifice that showed a society built around warrior elites who ruled trade paths and resources. Dig work has shown the advanced nature of Tumulus society. There's proof of wide trade networks that brought Baltic amber, Mediterranean coral, and rare metals from across Europe to their settlements. Fresh genetic studies from sites like Lobingan in Germany show that Tumulus Communities kept father-line family structures with clear proof of family groups across multiple generations. The warrior culture of the Tumulus people built the social rankings and land ideas that would later mark both Celtic and Germanic societies. This makes them key ancestors to the groups that would shape Iron Age Europe.